Hi y'all, I'm Dr. Ken. So I have been getting this question a lot on TikTok and so I did a video there and I wanna do it here. Are you having a lot of vaginal symptoms like thinking that it's a bacterial vaginosis or a yeast infection or even an STD um, and not knowing what's going on and you've been to your doctor and every test that you've done is negative? Has this happened to you? Um, if so, then listen up because I'm gonna do a series um, and this will be the first one. Um, there is um, an infection, a vaginitis, that is the complete opposite of bacterial vaginosis. And so it could be a possibility that you may have this and not know it. And so let us let me give you some a little background information. Our vaginas are slightly acidic, 3.5 to 4.5. That's our pH. That's where we want to stay. We have good bacteria that is there called lactobacilli. And that lactobacilli is going to fight off yeast infections, it's going to fight off bad bacteria, and it just keeps everything all harmonious and great, right? Well, if for some reason you took some antibiotics and you got rid of all your good bacteria, um, or you washed incorrectly with the wash soap, the wrong soap, or some someone disrupted your pH, um, and now you have a lower lactobacilli, and now you got a high gardnerella and now you have a bacterial vaginosis, or let's say you took antibiotics and now you have a yeast infection. Okay, that's the ones that we're used to. Well, imagine you have the complete opposite. You had too much of a good thing. So you have this overgrowth of lactobacilli. We have way too much, like what is going on? And we're thinking it's good stuff, right? Why would it be bad? Well, it's bad because the lactobacilli turns into lactic acid and the lactic acid once the lactic acid goes up then our ph drops really low into this really acidic area below 3.5 and then we begin to have lysis that's why it's cytolytic lysis of that good protective vaginal tissue that like the inside of your mouth occurs what the, the, the vaginal tissue is like and that is very protective um so you get lysis of that. You're starting to lose those those cells are sloughing off. And now you're getting this thick cottage cheese discharge, an excessive amount of this discharge. But not only are you getting discharge, because of the lysis of the cells off the walls, you're now getting inflammation, irritation. You're having pain, itching, burning, pain with urination, and pain with intercourse. And you don't know what the heck is going on. That is cytolytic vaginitis. That is the complete opposite of bacterial vaginosis because your pH is low here, where bacterial vaginosis, your pH is high. Your lactobacilli is high here, where bacterial vaginosis, your lactobacilli is low. You have no odor, you have fishy odor. The difference, and how do you, that's how you distinguish the two. How do you distinguish it from a yeast infection? The only difference is when you get a test done, your when your doctor swabs your vajay, um, you'll have a yeast infection. Even if you use those at home tests, you'll have yeast on the test. If you're doing the test and there's no yeast, then it's not a yeast infection, but you're having these symptoms. So the next part is, how do we get this diagnosed? How do we find out that we have this? It's gonna take some digging. It's gonna take some on your part because if your provider, if it's not on their mind and you're going to a primary care and you're not seeing your OBGYN, maybe you've seen your primary care and it's not on their mind, um, you may have to put it on their mind. You may have to say, hey, look, I've been having these symptoms. I'm not going crazy. It's burning, it hurts. I have crazy discharge and I can't live like this and you're telling me everything is negative. Can you check my pH, one, and can you check the the microbiome of my vagina. And I want to know if, the, if you have the test to do that. Um, you can also do this on your own. You can go on Amazon and order some vaginal pH strips. And that's something you can bring here. I got my evidence. My pH is too low. Um, there's tests that you can go online and um, request and they check your microbiome. If you want to do that, it's out of pocket and you can bring it to your doctor. But I would say go to your doctor and see if they can do those tests on you. And so that would be your first step, getting it diagnosed. Um, and it's a diagnosis of exclusion. We have to make sure that it's nothing else before we say it's this, okay? And then treatment. That's where it gets even trickier 
Because remember when I said lactobacilli is our friend and it keeps everything kosher? <laughs> um, if treating it means that I got to get rid of some of the lactobacilli, how do I not get rid of all of it or too much of it? Because if you take an antibiotic to get rid of the lactobacilli, now you have the risk of getting a yeast infection because now you don't have the lactobacilli to fight off the yeast. Just like when you take amoxicillin for a sinus infection and you got to call your doctor to get you some diflucan because that amoxicillin got rid of all your lactobacilli and now you have a yeast infection. That's the same thing that can happen. And so that's one way of treating it is with antibiotics. But another way, um, there's several ways that you can do this, but baking soda. Now, I want you guys to listen to me clearly, very, very clearly. Do not go and do this baking soda remedy without the diagnosis of cytolytic vaginitis from your doctor. The reason why is because baking soda is an alkaline base and you can cause so much more damage if you overdid it or did it when you shouldn't have done it. So like I said, your vagina is slightly acidic. Here you go with this alkaline base that's like turning and like can cause some crazy disruption. You do not want to do that unless you know for sure that your pH is super low and you're gonna use the baking soda as a buffer. And it's gonna buffer, like if you remember science and chemistry and you have this buffer so you can bring the pH up. So that's another way. And there's like baking soda baths, baking soda um, douches. There's like ways that you can put baking soda in little capsules and insert them. There's several ways you can do that. So the baking soda, and then the antibiotic with your doctor. The doctor might say, let's do a topical clindamycin or um, they may wanna do topical because they can feel like they can control it a little bit more and not get rid of your good stuff. Um, the other things you wanna think about is people who get cytolytic vaginitis, usually, and it usually happens from several reasons. Maybe they, um, most of the time for women, it happens during the luteal phase. The luteal phase is right before your period. So, um, if that's the case, then we got some type of hormonal imbalance. The other hormonal issue that it could be from is estrogen dominance. So if you suffer from any of those estrogen dominant type of conditions that you know you may have, um, then that could be the cause of it. Uh, if you are perimenopausal or menopausal and you're taking HRT, you're taking estrogen, that could be the cause of it. Um, in addition to taking like um, high potency probiotics, um, you may be making it worse if you thought it was bacterial vaginosis and you were, you know, loading up on the probiotics, you were um, using the pH balance cleansers, you may be making it worse not knowing. So you're going to stop all those things. You're going to try to figure out what your hormonal issue is because most of the time when it happens in the luteal phase, your period is protected protective and it goes away so get you get to that point where it goes away and it gets better you need to work on your hormones and usually hormones it always has to do with what we're putting in our bodies and what we're not putting in our bodies and so a lot of times it has something to do with insulin resistance insulin dependence um so if you have hormone um imbalances that you know about like your thyroid or or even diabetes you got to get those things under control um Watch my video on TikTok. I'm gonna have to put it on here actually of how, that's a great video to put on here, of how um, eating sugar affects your period. And that will help you in understanding how to also balance out your hormones. So that's the treatment, that's cytolytic vaginitis. There's several more, <laughs> there's not several more, but there's like two more that I'm gonna do. Um, there's, I'm gonna do disquamative inflammatory vaginitis and I'm gonna do aerobic vaginitis. Um, and I will do those soon. So, and, but in between that, I'm going to post that video here about the, um, how sugar affects your period. All right. If you have any questions, just put it in a comment and I'll come back and answer.